The go to it spirit is well in evidence in South Africa, and at the Royal Mint Pretoria, most of the machines have been switched over to the making of munitions. In the melting department, the alloys for cartridges are cast into bars or billets, as they're called. They're made of brass and are used for the cases. Into the rollers as billets and out the other side as striplings. The next machine turns the thin strips into little cups. With mathematical accuracy, it cuts and shapes the first steps in the making of the cases. But there are many other stages before the finished cases can come clean. With each process, they get slimmer and more tapered. The heads of the cases are indented and marked with a particular grade and date, together with a government stamp. And now for the bullet. A bar of lead is placed in a machine that squeezes it so hard it comes out in the form of a thin rope. It's the core of the bullet, the go-to-it end of the cartridge. The leaden rope is cut into exact bullet lengths and shaped into exact bullet shapes. Then they're tipped with metal and fitted into the envelopes. The machines are so finely adjusted that every process is standardized for measurement, quantity and time. But there's still room for the human element. After all, the machines aren't blessed with blue eyes. And now they've reached the last stage in the actual making of the cartridge case, the fitting of live detonator caps. These are charged with fulminate of mercury. The caps are mechanically varnished to make them moisture-proof. From a special safety chamber, the cordite that propels the bullet is fed to the loading room. There it's cut into strips and pressed into the cases, again with 100% accuracy. The marriage of bullets and cases. In a moment, the two will be one, thanks to a little timely pressure. And that, my dear Chumley, is how the point .303 cartridge is made. So pick up your rifle and go to it. And that brings